Hi everybody, this is Coach Nicole Renee. For those of you who may not know who I am, I am a certified life coach specializing in relationship and self-love. Tonight I'd like to talk to you about a topic that's very dear and near to my heart, and it is what is love? I know from coaching people over the years that many of us don't even know the inner depth of what love really stands for, what it really means. And so I like to go over that with you and let's just kind of peel back the layers and kind of dissect the word love. If I were to ask many of you, what is love? You would probably refer to your spouse, your children maybe, possibly an animal, a parent, God. You know, there's different areas. If I were to ask you, what is love? You would answer differently based on who you were actually referring to. And so I like to take this time to really go over it in depth of what the perception of what love really truly is and what it means to you and what it means to me and what we should really look at it through the lenses um, of God. And I would say that many of us don't know how to love and we don't know how to receive love. And a lot of times it deals with our inner self that we don't know authentically who we are to embrace love for ourselves. And it really the core foundation is because many of us don't have an intimate relationship with God, who is the representation of what love is. Now, many of you may disagree, but I'm here to tell you that I personally, from my perspective, God is love and love is God. And that is the true foundation. And so I'd like to take you on this journey with me while we dissect the word love a little bit deeper, a little bit further. And I'm hoping that by the end of our conversation, we may have to do like a possible part two, that you would kind of look at love through different lenses and, and really try to adjust how do we see the word love. Okay. So welcome you on this journey with me. So I like to go over for those of you that um, um, are familiar with the word love. I'm going to speak of it according to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 8, um, where it talks about it. I'm going to read it thoroughly through, and then I'm going to go back and we're going to peel back the layers, okay? So it says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. And then I skip down to verse 13 and it says, Now abides faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So I like to take you down this journey of peeling back the layers of love from God's perspective through his lenses. All right. When it mentions that love is patient. And I want you to really refer to the person that you say you love, whether it be a family member, a friend. And I want to know, as I speak and dissect this word, do you really love that person? Or is that an area that we need to work on together? Okay. It says love is patient, you know, which means it, it's calm. You know, it suspends judgment. Okay. Love is kind. That means it's empathy. You know, um, you have a heart. It's, it, it's nice. It's just very, very friendly. It does not envy, which means it's not resentful. It's not jealous. It's not discontentment. It does not boast, meaning it doesn't brag on oneself. It is not proud, having a high opinion of yourself, being arrogant. Now, let's not misconstrue mis, um, the two because confidence is very different from arrogance. So it is not proud, is an arrogance. It is, does not dishonor, which means it doesn't disgrace. It doesn't shame. It doesn't lack respect. It doesn't lack honor. So it is not self-seeking, which means it doesn't, it's not all about yourself. It's not selfish where you don't have concern for others and you only have concern for yourself. It is not easily angered, which means it is not irritable. It's not short-tempered. It's not moody. It keeps no record of wrongs, meaning it's not remembering the evil that was done to us or refusing to trust people um, who have proved themselves unworthy. Love does not delight in evil, which means it doesn't delight in wicked behavior, morally wrong, but it rejoices with truth meaning that it's proven by facts of sincerity. 
It always protects, meaning love, defend, shield, guard. It keeps secure. It always trusts, which means it's reliable. As confidence to trust each other, it means to build. It means always hope, feeling good. Things are to come. It always perseveres, meaning that it can, continues the course of action in the face of difficulty. It's persistent. Um, it's an important character trait for success, perseveres. Love never fails, which means it never misses the mark. It succeeds. It meets expectations. And now it says, and now abides faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love, meaning it's intense feeling of deep affection. And I say all that, that as we dissect those words, are we really loving one another in the eyes that God feels that we should? And I have to beg to differ. Many of us are not. Many of us, we love on conditional basis. It's not unconditional. And one thing that is, is so clear to me, many people think that they're loving when in, reac when, when in reaction is lust. Um, there is a pastor, Dr. A.R. Bernard, that always says the difference between lust and love. When you lust for someone, you're benefiting self at the expense of others. But when you love someone, you're benefiting others at the expense of yourself. So you have to really determine and distinguish if you are in love or you are in lust, okay? And one thing that I think is key is that many of us are walking around and we don't have an authentic love for ourself, which is a major problem because we were beautifully and wonderfully made by God, right? So if we don't have a love for ourselves. I question on where our relationship is times with God, because I think the more I seek God's face and the more I spend time with him, my love for myself and my love for him grows and my love for others. It just expands. It's something about that. It just expands. And so it's important that for those of you that don't know what it means to even love yourself, I encourage you to establish a relationship with God, to really read his word, to really sit at his feet and just be able to absorb what he has to say in the word of God as it relates to you and as it relates to the character of God, because we need to strive to be more like God right? I think that that is really, really important. I've always told my children, um, especially my girls before they start dating that, you know, I think it's important that you love yourself authentically to the core, right? And some people may question, well, how in the world do you love yourself? Well, that's a very good question. But I always told my girls, you know, before you start to date, Guys, I think it's important that you date yourself. And you know, well, mommy, what does that look like? Well, that means spending time with yourself. That means getting to know who you are. That means enjoying spending time with yourself. You know, you don't always need to be with your girlfriends. You need to be able to enjoy you because if you can't enjoy you, who you think is going to want to spend time with you if you don't even want to spend time with you? So that is, in, that is key. And I always try to explain to them that for those of us that are trying to learn how to love who we are, you know, you take baby steps. You spend time with yourself. You ask yourself questions. You do a lot of reflection, right? It's work. For those of you who feel that loving yourself is not work, honey, it is work, but the reward is great. The reward is great. You know, you might take the time to sit down one day and just write a list, write down everything about yourself that you love, everything, embrace everything that you love and write a long list, right? And then on the other side, write the things that you don't like about yourself. And then after you write that list, you determine what on that list do you have the ability to change, right? And whatever you don't have the ability to change, you need to find something good about that. Embrace every aspect of yourself, the good, the bad, the indifferent, right? Because it's almost like a slap in God's face to not embrace who you are. He works so, so well to just craftily design who we are, that for us to not embrace who we are and accept who we are and love who we are is, is disappointing, you know? And so I think it's important that we take that time to really spend time um, seeking his face and spend time loving him and loving ourselves. Because when we can love ourselves, we can know and learn how to love other people. Um, there was a, a pastor, Rick Warren, that 
wrote in his one of his books that said, the best use of life is love. The best expression of love is time. And the best time to love is now. Because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We can see based on the pandemic that we have encountered, tomorrow is not promised. So we need to appreciate and love on those that we have the opportunity to do today and not take things for granted, right? Because many of times we get caught up in projects, we get caught up in things. And one thing that God really values is relationships. He speaks of that. And um, it, it's a it's top priority in his list because love is top priority in his list. And so relationships is right up there. And so it's important that we don't get so caught up in projects and so caught up in things that we miss out on loving our fellow brother and sister, right? It's important that we spend time to love on those that are around us, right? So I I, I challenge you today to um, find out what you need to do to start spending more time with others, those that, that are dear and near to your heart. What sacrifices do you think you need to make? Because the time is now. And what do you need to cut out in your schedule to make that possible? You know, I, I think it's important. I think it's important that we set the time aside to really um, spend time with those that are important to us. Because love is a legacy. If you should transition tomorrow, what have you left for your family? What legacy have you left for your family? You know, when people think of legacy, they always think of, you know, you know, inheritance of, you know, homes and, and, and money and, and assets and things of that nature. And that is very true because the Bible speaks about you need to leave an inheritance to your children's children. So that is a very important aspect of one thing that we need to work on. But the other is, um, you know, what will they say about you when you transition? What will that dash in the middle really mean to those that you come in contact with. And so I just don't want us to utilize our time at home as idle time. We need to be working on our relationship with God and we need to be working on our relationship with ourselves because it's in those nurturing of those two relationships that we will know how to love and we will know how to receive love. So I encourage you today to work on that if you possibly can. Work on establishing a relationship with our Heavenly Father and work on establishing a relationship with yourself. Because as many of us, we live with ourselves each and every day. We look in the mirror each and every day, but we really don't know who that person is in the mirror because we're walking around being a representative, wearing a mask and not displaying who we really are. It's time for us to walk in our truth and, and express who we really are and, and love who we really are. So um, I'm going to probably do a part two to this that will go a little deeper, but um, I just wanted to touch base with you briefly and, and give you something to think about, something to really ponder on, okay? And um, I hope you take this time to, to love on those that are very important to you, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Good night.